This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Seriously, what the heck are the car companies worried about right now that has them getting rid of so many employees? The chip shortage is starting to ease up, inventory levels are building back up, car sales are decent, and so are profits. Yet, GM, Ford, and Stellantis are getting rid of at least a combined 10,000 employees through voluntary buyouts. And now it's Volvo's turn as well. It's going to cut 1,300 white-collar jobs, or about 6% of its workforce in Sweden. And it won't stop there. Volvo wants to cut more jobs in its global operations, as well as get rid of most of its consultants. And here's something that we didn't expect to hear. The White House is praising Tesla and Toyota for their work on electric cars. Reuters reports that John Podesta, a senior advisor in the White House, recently met with Toyota and said that with the company under new leadership, it's now firmly committed to EVs. Podesta and another White House advisor also met with Elon Musk in January, which is when Musk opened up Tesla's superchargers to other brands of EVs. They described Tesla as very open and workable and called it a great partner. Toyota and Tesla are not unionized in the U.S., so it's unusual to hear the Biden White House praise non-union companies. Gasoline prices should ease up somewhat this summer in the U.S. The EPA issued an emergency waiver that allows E15 gasoline to be sold across the country this summer. E15 is gasoline with 15% ethanol, whereas most gasoline is E10. The EPA says E15 will stretch out supplies that have been disrupted by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. BMW's net profit plummeted 58% in the first quarter, which it blames on higher raw material prices, sharply higher R&D spending, and higher sales and administrative costs. It posted a net profit of 5.1 billion euros compared to 12.2 billion last year. But last year, it also booked a one-time 7.7 billion euro gain by taking over BMW Brilliance, its joint venture partner in China. Take that out, and BMW would have posted about a 13% increase in profits. One place the company is booming is with electric cars. Sales shot up 82% after growing 86% last year. They now account for 11% of all BMWs sold. Freightliner is expanding its electric truck lineup in the American market. The company unveiled its EM2 truck, which goes into production this fall at Daimler's plant in Portland, Oregon. Offered in both Class 6 and 7 versions, the trucks are powered by an e-powertrain from Detroit Diesel, which is now simply just called Detroit. The Class 6 truck features a single electric motor that produces 190 horsepower and a 194 kilowatt hour battery that provides up to 180 miles of range. The Class 7 version has a dual motor setup that combines for 255 horsepower, a 291 kilowatt hour battery pack, and a 250 mile range. More green hydrogen is on the way. Norwegian company Nell will build a $400 million plant in Michigan to produce up to four gigawatts of alkaline and PEM electrolyzers. Nell plans to build the plant in phases to make sure supply meets demand. The company says it looked at several sites across the U.S but it chose Michigan because of financial incentives, its highly skilled workforce, and cooperation with universities and research partners, but also because the plant will be located near GM, who it's collaborating with to bring down the cost of its electrolyzer technology. The biggest automotive supplier in the world, Bosch, is shaking up the structure of the company. It's creating a new standalone division called Bosch Mobility that will focus on software and mobility. By establishing it as a standalone unit with its own board, Bosch wants to move at a faster pace. 
and by 2029, Bosch Mobility should generate more than $84 billion a year. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. The Biden administration provided a massive loophole for foreign automakers whose EVs don't qualify for the $7,500 tax credit in the U.S. As long as that EV is leased, it can qualify for the credit. So Kia is going to put the pedal to the metal on EV leasing. Its lease rate is expected to jump from 15% today to 30 to 40% in another year or so. And one of the vehicles that Kia will push leasing with is the EV9, which launches in global markets before the end of the year. It will first ship the EV9 to the U.S., but Kia is making updates to its plant in Georgia to build the electric SUV there next summer. It also says the EV9 will lead the company into the software-defined vehicle era. It has a more centralized computing system with wireless communication. This gives the EV9 expanded in-vehicle OTA capabilities that not only update core components, but allow for convenience features to be added as well. That includes things like its hands-free Level 3 system called Highway Driving Pilot, as well as features that you can purchase when you need or want them, like Remote Smart Parking Assist or Lighting Pattern, which allows the user to pick from five different display modes for the pixelated lighting clusters on the front of the car. Kia says the updates will expand to other areas like entertainment, gaming, and sound. We could start to see robo-taxis everywhere next year. GM's Cruise expects to expand dramatically, and Waymo too. Waymo announced it's greatly expanding its autonomous ride-hailing service in Phoenix, Arizona. It's now operating in 180 square miles of the metro area, which Waymo claims is the largest fully autonomous service area in the world. Anyone there can hail a ride with its app. It's also giving more access to its approved customers in San Francisco, which it calls, quote, trusted testers. It's waiting for a permit from California to start charging for rides without a safety driver on board. Waymo is currently serving 10,000 trips per week to public riders in both cities. And by next year, it expects that to grow to 100,000 trips. And at some point, Waymo plans to offer its service in Los Angeles, but it hasn't set a date on that yet. The main benefit of platform sharing is getting bigger scale so you can drive down costs. And with so many brands, Stellantis can really take advantage of that and now it's showing off how it can spread EV updates across its brands thanks to platform sharing. Peugeot is coming out with a new 2008, and Citroën is coming out with a new C4 and C4X that share the exact same upgrades to their all-electric powertrains. They get a new, more powerful and efficient electric motor that produces 115 kilowatts or 156 horsepower, as well as a new, more nickel-rich battery. That pack is 54 kilowatt hours, which is bigger than the old 50 kilowatt hour pack, but the range jump is still fairly significant, going from up to 360 kilometers to 420, or 223 to 260 miles. Look for the new Peugeot and Citroëns to go on sale soon. And that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to check out AutoLine After Hours this afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, may the 4th be with you. AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.
Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. <laughs>